ensuring your food is produced to the highest standards. Hayfield Manor is a family-owned five-star boutique hotel in the middle of Cork City, and I've come to meet the executive head chef, Mark Staples. The hotel has two restaurants, Orchids and Perro's Garden Bistro. An afternoon tea is especially popular here. Mark, thank you for having me in your kitchen. It's great to be here. I've stayed here a few times and always enjoyed the whole experience. Good. From the food, the staff, the decor, it's a very special place. So what are you going to cook for me today? We are going to cook a dish using this lovely duck, Aylesbury duck. It's Carrigaline Marlow counter caught duck, free range duck. We're going to show you how to butcher it. We're going to do, use the legs, we're going to use breast and the duck fat to season some potatoes. Wow, so you're using every element of the use duck. Use every element of the duck. It's just whipping up the wishbone. The duck legs, cut them down here. Snap them open, and that's that. Now we've cooked these overnight with lots of orange and carrots and garlic, celery, salt and pepper. Lovely taste going through that now. And just slicing my knife down here as close as bone so we're not wasting any. Yeah. You're noticing then the skin's lovely and dry, so we get crispy. So just trimming this up, making it look pretty. All this will get rendered down and used up in our dish later on. Let's trim that there now. And a little chef's trick here. Sharp knife, peel of a knife. So that duck breast is ready. Score it along here to help it render down a little bit more without nipping the flesh. Yeah, that's great. So that's Look ready to that. go. It's, it's really meaty, isn't it? So you season up. Season of salt and, and pepper as we well. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And then secret to a nice duck and duck breast is to render the skin down. Yes. You don't want a soggy duck breast. So a nice medium, medium height heat pan. Mm -hmm. No oil in it. You see later why. Straight down, skin side down. So it just renders down. All the oil is going to come out of the dock. Nice. So we're going to leave it on the stove top for about five minutes now, rendering down, getting a crisp skin. Perfect. In the meantime, wow. we have the duck leg. So you've this cooked already? This is cooked. So a duck leg is put in the oven in its own fat with some orange, some thyme, some garlic, rosemary, lots of arum wraps. That's it there. Lovely duck meat coming in there. It's broken down and everything that it's cooked in is, is flavour. So we're building up the flavour all the time okay. in this dish. Take a little bit here. So what have you got here? Uh, yeah, pastry. puff pastry discs. So ah. it's cut, cut into circles. Yeah. Put a little bit of this lovely comfy meat in each one. Can you do those two for yeah, me? Yeah, of course. This is lovely that you're showcasing two different variations of the duck. There's too much of a nice produce to waste yeah. any of it. Are you happy with that enough? Yep, yeah, plenty okay. in there. And we're now just going to egg wash each side. Yeah. And you can just squash them together like a pasty. Is this something from your childhood or something like this you remember? Yeah, it no? does have my, my heritage. OK. Um, from coal miners used to eat pasties. And they're basically a little pie, aren't they? Basically a, a little pie, and they used to be, one end used to be sweet, the other end used to be savoury. So the miners pick up by the crust and fingers like this. Really? Eat one end, that's savoury, and finish on the sweet end. I never knew that. So this is puff pastry, egg wash, a little bit of egg and milk, is it? Yep, and it's cold as well. Always work with puff pastry, it's cold. So yeah. you get the nice, hard fat and for the Actually, a good tip for everyone is that the duck meat has to be cold. If it was yes. hot, yeah, you would burst the pastry, yeah, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, well, Perfect. you burst the pastry and fat. So and here we have a tray. These potatoes have mm -hmm. been cut with the fat. This is like oh. a potato fondant, cut yeah, out like with a cutter. Fondant. Cut out nicely, cooked in a little bit of a duck stock, yeah. the fat and the butter. Brilliant. So what we do, just check on the duck. Beautiful colour, nice yeah. crisp again. Mm. Five, five minutes in total, really. That's a really good tip, dry pan. A lot of people say to me they're nervous about cooking duck. It's either too tough, too chewy, it dries out. Yeah, also, good. when you're cooking meat as well, let it rest. You yes. can give it five, ten minutes just to relax from yeah, being yeah. out of the oven. It's very tense, that's been immune. Nice little brush of that's egg good. yolk onto this, goes onto a tray. No. Parchment paper so it doesn't stick to a Nothing tray. Sticks. So we pop these in the oven now. The Lovely. oven's been preheated to 180. And how long do you give them? We go give those about 10 minutes. The pastry is quite thin, okay. the oven's nice and hot. Would you finish your duck in the oven? Yeah, I'm just ah, going okay. to pop that in the oven now. I'm going to ask you to do okay. that. So you've got a lovely duck, you pop that in the oven. Yeah, no problem. So Mark, tell me about the hotel, the whole run of the, the business, the different operations, the restaurants, it's the a hotel, busy place. Oh, it's a busy yeah. place. I have 26 chefs in total. I have one chef that's in charge of bacon, the scones, all homemade breads and the afternoon tea. We do what we call traditional afternoon tea. On stands, you have finger sandwiches, with scones and all your pastries. Piano playing in the background, tea and white glove service. Very traditional there. Very nice. We have a fine dining restaurant. This is one of the dishes on the fine dining restaurants. And then we have a bistro as well. So there are many bedrooms in the hotel. We have 88 bedrooms, so busy breakfast going on in the morning. We do about 160 breakfast, which wow. is good. I think the duck is ready there now. Okay. We're going to give it a good rest while yeah. we get the rest of the dish finished off. That what are you super. looking for in the duck? Like, how do you know when it's cooked? I'm looking for a lovely colour. I know it's going to have good rest. It still feels that'd be medium rare now by the time it's nice rested. And yeah, nice and spongy, soft. Yeah, nice and spongy, soft. 
crisp skin and golden brown colour. Okay, so we're just going to take it onto a clean tray okay, and rest that. Up. We're going to get the elements finished for dish now. If you can make some lovely carrot strips. Yeah. So what have we done here? Uh, just carrot strips peeled down nice and thin, and we're just going to deep fry them into a just nice hot fryer. Just to crisp them up? Yeah, just to crisp okay. them up. So I'll do that over here. We have lovely carrots from Kinsale, lovely baby carrots. Oh, look at that. Cooked in orange juice. Beautiful. Orange juice, butter, and star anise. Okay. So they're just getting reheated up. Are these okay for you? Yep, they're perfect. Lovely. Just leave them next to a duck and they get nice and crispy now. Gorgeous, that's them. There's there a bit is. of salt as well. Perfect, lovely. We've got lovely puree here made, and there's just a hint. At the last minute when you're pureeing it down, you add a little bit of buttermilk so it doesn't uh, split. We have lovely sauce going on here. So this is from the bones. So the bones have been roasted off, cooked overnight with carrots, onions, celery. Lovely and colour. Leeks. Lovely colour. You get that mm. from the roast on the bones. Lots of red wine going in it. Mm. Stock's reduced down, and there's a little splash of orange juice. Can you just check for puff pastry? Yeah, so it should so. be golden brown for me. So that's beautiful. I love the colour in the potato. Nice bit of texture. Beautiful. And to leave that there. Wonderful. So uh, duck sauce, we're going yeah. to boil up, and these mm -hmm. are damsons just coming into season. These are picked from my sous chef's farm down in oh, Westport. Lovely. So this goes on the stove now. Lovely rich glaze coming through there. We're building texture. We're building taste. So duck has just relaxed in this nice ambient temperature still, still ready to go. And we start off by placing up the dish. A little potato at 12 o'clock. Little duck pasty, and the smell of the carrot puree, and it's a taste of duck. So we just give nice one slice of duck. That's beautifully cooked. I like my meat nice and pink. It's the I only like way. it nice and pink, but not yeah. rare. Nice no, I and agree. pink. Yeah. Look how it's cooked into cylinder shapes. There's great colour in the plate. That's beautiful. The sauce. I love the damsons in it. It's lovely. So you're getting fruit. So you're getting the fruit coming through without yeah. being too fruity. You have to have the elements of the dish all working mm -hmm. together. A little bit of sauce just around the outside. And then the wee carrot tops, just for a bit of greenery. And of course, these carrot crisps, which just add a further crisp texture to it. That's really, really pretty. Shall we taste? So I'm going to start off with the duck breast. A wee bit of the sauce, the puree. Mm. Come on, go for it. That's a fabulous dish. Good. I Thank hope I can so welcome you back for dinner sometime. Oh, listen, Let's join you. Thanks Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. gentlemen. going to do a lovely monkfish recipe. A monkfish is one of my favourite fish. It's firm, it's meaty, it's a beautiful Mediterranean stew I'm going to show you. So the whole thing is to start the foundation of the actual stew. We're going to put a little bit of oil into the pan, some olive oil, heat the pan. I have two red onions finely diced, a lovely sizzle and the fennel. So try and chop it as fine as you can. Crush two cloves of garlic. Peel your garlic, crush them into the dish, mix this all through. Put the lid on this just for a couple of minutes. And then I'm going to talk about all the different spices we're going to put in. First one we have for a little bit of heat is some chili seeds. Nice and spicy. There's roughly about a teaspoonful there. We have some smoked sweet paprika, fennel seed. So we're using the fennel bulb and the seed. And a seed licorice taste coming through from it. And then saffron. So this is some Spanish saffron. And these are the little strands which come from the crocus flower. Put about a tablespoon of boiling water on top of the saffron so you release that lovely flavour and colour. So I'm going to get all these spices in here, lift the lid off. So the first thing we'll put in is our fennel seeds, sprinkle them all over. We have our chilli flakes, sweet paprika. You can use the smoked one if you want to, and then our saffron. So I'm going to put in the whole liquid here and stir this through. Coat all the lovely onion and fennel colour and the flavour will just come out of the saffron and all those spices. So that's what we have there. It's not cooked, but we've just started the cooking process. And then two cans of plum tomatoes, which are just roughly chopped. So they go in there. Stir this through. Break them up with the spoon if they're a little bit big. And I'm using some chicken stock or you can use some fish stock if you do happen to have mussels. Mussel stock is beautiful. And how you make mussel stock is by getting some mussels Make sure they're fresh. Put them in a dry pan with some chopped shallot, or you can use onion, a little bit of leek and white wine, and some water. And when the mussels open up, it only take about maybe two or three minutes, you have the sweetest, most beautiful stock you'll ever taste. Definitely worth doing. One last thing to go in is these potatoes. Now, these are raw, but the skin is on. And we've cut them into quarters. Just sprinkle them all over and just stir this. These potatoes will take about 20 minutes until they're cooked. I'm just going to put the lid on. But what I'm going to show you is how to prepare the monkfish. These are the monkfish fillets. It has a meaty texture. It's not a strong fish in any way. 
It's beautiful. The membrane is removed. Your fishmonger will do this. You just simply, with a good sharp knife, you just take that off. And that comes off. You don't use that. The bone has been removed, but we want to cut this into nice big chunks. So what we call this is medallions. And in the Basque country, they serve it on the bone with a little bit of fried garlic, a little bit of chili and oil. It's so simple, so beautiful. Some sliced potatoes, absolutely gorgeous. If you were to use hake or cod, it would just fall to pieces. I would also think the likes of prawns would be really lovely and some mussels. So that's my monkfish. I'm gonna turn down the heat just underneath my stew. You hear it bubbling away. Give it one final stir. And that is gonna take 20 to 25 minutes to cook until the potatoes are cooked. After five minutes, the monkfish should be cooked. And that really depends on the thickness that you cut it. From start to finish, 25 minutes, and your stew is done. Make sure the potatoes are cooked. We're gonna season this up with some sea salt and some black pepper. Now stir it through. You can put in some basil. You can actually, if you want a little bit of fennel or dill, get my bowl, and we're just gonna spoon this in and kind of pile it nice and high. So I've used monkfish in this, and you have to really pick a firm fish. Gurnard would be a very good one. A little bit more trickier to prepare, but it's still delicious. To finish this, sprinkle some freshly chopped flat leaf parsley. That's lovely freshness. This is a nice little texture thing. Toast some whole blanched almonds just under the grill. Chop them like breadcrumbs and mix them with a little bit of sweet paprika. So I think that looks beautiful. Tastes even better. That's my Mediterranean monkfish stew with potatoes. You also have smoked paprika and the lovely almond crumb. In the next program, I make jam with the wonderful Helen G. Discover how some of Ireland's best loved pottery is made and visit the Michelin starred Campania restaurant in Kilkenny. And of course, I'll be doing some cooking myself on board the Shannon Princess. I hope you can join me. The Board Bia Quality Mark, ensuring your food is produced to the highest standards of traceability and care for the environment.